What's going on? It's Aaron, your CEO and producer of Black Fly on the Wall. We appreciate you watching today's episode, but guess what? You can't leave just yet. Come on back. Really back in. Make sure you tap that subscribe button. Like, share, subscribe. We appreciate the love. We appreciate the support. It is much gratitude towards you. Make sure you share it with your friends. We're a black man providing black people with premium content. And most importantly, we're providing black men with a safe space to communicate. So what better way to do that other than subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content? We appreciate the love. Make sure you subscribe today. Thank you. How's the smoke? What you smoking on, man? Some of the best premium cigars on the market. Black owned, Charlotte, North Carolina. Make sure you tap in with them. How's the smoke on Instagram? How's the smoke.com? And of course, they're the personal favorites of Black Fly on the Wall. Much love and appreciation. How's it? Fellas. What's up? What's up? Let me grab it's the my Genesis. Drink. Let me grab my drink. <laughs> you know, Black Fly on the Wall production, you know, this new. Dope, dope segment called Groom Cave. Been talking about it. Yeah, we've been talking about it for a while, man. And mm-hmm. just something to continue to diversify ourselves and, you know, bring some sticks and some, you know, fine black owned whiskey mm-hmm. sponsored by, you know, none other than Uncle Nears. It's 1856. Um, Uncle Nears is uh, something that I recently came into over the last year. And, um, a whiskey that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. It's strong Neat. though. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially the 1856. Ooh, it's it's, like it's that. smooth. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's smooth. good, but it's strong. It works. Okay. So you know, we, we all having a, a double, a double unk. Like that. Neat. Like that. Like Neat. Like you know, um, smoking a, I got a Maduro cigar, um, and you know, so you know, <laughs> Groom Cave. Essentially, our, our goal with Groom Cave, man, is to continue to fuse conversations that men typically have. Uh, in barbershops and cigar lounges uh, and enjoy them over uh, fine whiskey and cigars and continue to push the conversation of providing black men with a safe space to communicate and we are the pillar of that. So here's a, a cheer to uh, the bridge. inaugural, you know, inaugural Goon Cave episode. I almost did it up to it, boy. <laughs> You almost even tap the glass. I, I, I definitely almost tap the glass. So, so, man, the topic of today's discussion, good barbers, dope stories. Have you ever been to a barber shop? If so, you know how to get in there. The most important thing is making sure you have a very good barber. Why? Because your barber not only is responsible for your haircut, but he's also responsible for your mental health. Pouring into you and getting some of the best experiences on a weekly and a bi-weekly basis that you can get. In this episode, we discuss the mecca of the barbershop and how it was the first safe space for black men. And also, how your barber is your counselor, your friend, your confidant. Tune in, tap in with us, and we hope you enjoy. Like, go to a barbershop or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, so kind of like, yeah, just call in. I ain't got to wait no more. So throughout that experience, um, you know, we've been able to get a lot closer. We've had, like, deeper conversations. Um, It's just somebody, you know, you do a lot of talking when they just and they just listening. You know, it's just somebody another mm-hmm. avenue for you to just get things out and uh, kind of not be judged. You know what I mean? And then it's like you get done, you feel like a new man almost. You got some things off your chest, and then you got the fresh cut. You go, you know, you're right. ready to go hit the scene a little bit. So, and I, mean, I feel like you know, the barbershop is one of the most imperfect places. It's the first black male safe space. Absolutely. The original. It's, it's so you have so many imperfections in there, like. The floor may not be as clean. Yeah, walls got the walls holes. got holes they in them. They got the 1970 pictures <laughs> with the, the but numbers the, you can fix the hair. The key, <laughs> the key, the key to it all, man, is that like you you meet so many imperfect people, and we live in a world where we feel as if perfection is the goal. Yeah. But really, the goal is to be yourself. That's real. And like in the barbershop, you find so many imperfections, and it pushes you to remain one of your authentic self and it's somewhere where you leave the workplace and whether like Duke you a dentist, Sam you work in you know, IT and myself work in healthcare and you know so it's kind of like a place where we can kind of take the gloves off, kick back, relax and just 
and just vibe. Yeah. What's one of the what's what's one of the craziest things you've seen at the barbershop? Man, that's tough. Uh, I'm gonna go first. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, I was at the barbershop one time, <laughs> some years back. Dude, you know you could get anything in the barbershop. Anything. People like women be like, nah, you know, they go get their hair done, they go get their nails done. And you know, it's kind of like they have conversations, bro. I pulled up at the barbershop, bro was like, yo, this was when gas was like 375. He was like, I got the truck out back. Boy had the drum on the back of the truck filling your gas up. Hustle. (laughs) If you can't. Now. That's what you're going to find at the barbershop. This, this ain't, bro. This ain't DVDs. Yeah. Rap, battle raps or whatever. These are like, <laughs> you getting, pre- and, and it was premium too. Mm. It was not in leather. That thing I was 93. That's, <laughs> that's, that's where the, I feel like that's where the original <laughs> Hustler came yeah. from. Oh, yeah, the original yeah, Hustler came out of the barbershop. Yeah, the original Hustler had to come out of the barbershop. But it was the only place you could get everything. Barber started, if we talk about real history, because you know I'm a dentist, right? So the very first barbers were us. Oh yeah, but that's a wild, that's a wild, that's a wild ride. Explain that. So originally, the barber is where you could have gone to get your teeth pulled, get bloodletting, and to get a haircut. Wow. So one stop shopping. One stop shopping. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying, and it branched off from there. Right. And so effectively, when I look at my barber, I'm like, bro, we be the same pocket to an extent, you know, because we have similar origins in that regard. In, in that, the barber was the dentist. Nice. And it nice. became very different aspects of, you know, I consider it healthcare as well, because self care is healthcare. That's mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Say that again, yeah. man. Right yeah. Self care is healthcare. Yeah, that's you right. Feel me? So, in that space, when that black man goes to get, you know, chopped up, you mm-hmm. know, trying to pop out, do something, you know, his girl mm-hmm. said, you can't go out this weekend. That's mm-hmm. self care. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It's just a matter that's, of. It's reassuring, too. It's reassurance, <laughs> you feel me? And so, seeing that, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And you know what, like, you know, in today's era, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, find a therapist, seek mental health. And I was having a conversation in my barbershop about two or three weeks ago. And we had a four, I got my hair cut, but I stayed there an extra 40 minutes talking about mental health. And it's like, that's where you can be, that's where a black man can be introduced to the world of mental health, you know. I, th- I feel like the first step, first step in mental health is just talking. There's so many people that, I mean, you know, some people go around, man, and they may not talk to nobody all day. Yeah. Literally don't speak a word to nobody all day. And so when you're not speaking, like, there's a lot of things running through your mind, and people do that from year on, year in, year out. Right. And so I feel yeah, like yeah. compounding, yeah, just compounding, you know, harvesting energy yeah. that may not be beneficial for them. And, you know, in the, in the barbershop, that's where you can find your first therapist, you know. Me and my barber have conversations about everything, man. I mean, from relationships to uh, the divide of religion and spirituality. I mean, we had a dope conversation. My, bar- my barber is actually a pastor. And like, he was open to having a conversation with me about spirituality outside of what he practices on a daily basis. And he said, you know, the world is changing. You know, it's changing to where men have to be able to converse with one another uh, without it being uh, aggressive and conflict, or like a pissing contest, like right? Yeah. Right, right. Like, he made, he made a comment. He was yeah. like, "I can talk to you because you're not trying to, you're not trying to persuade me in any type of way yeah. to change my views. We just two black men building yeah. it's a discussion, not a debate." Right. I say that often, man. You know, I say that often. It's like we have to we have to lose the debate mentality and, and focus strictly on okay, how can we just converse with one another? Because whenever you have, when you listen more than you speak. You can learn so much more. That's right, man. You learn the most. I, I call, like I always tell my barber, I call it blessed cuts. Like, cause I, it's a similar situation that we both are, you know, I'm Christian mm-hmm. and we both practice Christianity. So mm-hmm. like, even during these conversations that we have, it's not just a, a mature guidance, but it's also a spiritual guidance that I get sometimes out of there. And like I said, I just call it blessed cuts because I come out of there just feeling like I got some type of insight and just some type of little blessing, you know what I mean, that I can take throughout the day. Like I said, because he's older than me too, so it's like he's giving me a lot of game, and then he also makes sure that my spiritual self is in check too. Hey, so. I mean, well, I mean, the thing about it is, man, like, where where can you where can you find that at? You know, like a lot of a lot of black boys, especially, like that's their first interaction 
where they can see men from all walks of life yeah. in one area. That's why it's so very, very important for black boys to go to the barber. Like, even if you a father that can cut your boy's head, yeah. it's literally Put beneficial for yeah, your man. kid to go there. Just yeah. like they say, to see other black men. Yeah. Yeah. It takes yeah. a village to raise a child. Absolutely. Yeah. So those young black boys need to be around black men. Not just... Not just a black brothers, man. Yeah, yeah. Not just their mm-hmm. fathers, not just their sisters and brothers, but individuals outside of their nuclear family. Yeah. Right. Like, peep this. Like, yesterday, there was a guy in the barber shop, and he was talking about, talking to my barber about how to discipline his son. And, like, his son is now at that age where, like, he had to, like, he's having to, you know, like, hey, buck up at him because yeah, yeah. it's like, it's like, the, now it's time for the, the cub is no longer a cub. Like, yeah. The cub is now a lion. Right. And it's hard to have multiple adults in one house. Yeah. And kids are growing up so fast these days. And he's talking about how he's like having to basically like jack his son up. And so my barber's telling him like, I understand you, but, but look at it from way, this yeah. point of view. When your son gets upset, he looks at you for guidance on how to react. Mm-hmm. So how you react is gonna determine how he reacts. Yeah. And so he let him get upset, let him ball his fist up. But you stay sitting down on the couch let them know it don't, it don't like yo, you, you know you can't act like that right yeah and then all of a sudden he said that you know automatically his son was like upset he was coming down and he was like yes sir so the yes sir and the respect is still there but these young black boys are looking for guidance through right. action yeah, that's right. you know like a lot of a lot of times as we were in our upbringing we had a lot of communication verbal mm-hmm. accounts of what we should and what we should not do but as far as I think these kids follow action because they see, they see, they see, and they watch YouTube and they yeah. watch Instagram and they watch all these people with actions and how they act. And I think that's what that's more so what we have to lead by. We have to lead by our actions and our examples versus the just the only the things that we say. Nipsey said, like we got to handle the way that we respond to being disrespected. Mm-hmm. And I think the that's barbershop that's, that's is key. like one of the few, like key. the early places that I learned. How to respond, like, cause you know everybody be joking, you know mm-hmm. everybody kind of roast and joke on each other. But it was the first time that I seen that happen, and it was love. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you on the school bus and you right. kind of like, all right, bro, you gotta chill before I come back a couple seats. You know right. what I mean? But it's like it's grown men, right. and it's kind of it's grown men, and it's kind of love, and it's like that's the first time I think. You know, I, I, I had a single mother, mm-hmm. and these times where she would drop me off and leave, cause you know, single mom trying to be in a barber shop. We know well, that. Like, yeah. Ain't no single mom oh, trying yeah. to be in a barber shop. You know what? Like, in, oh, like yeah. when we were kids, like and this in the early nineties. Yeah. That was That's unheard your of for your mom to come into the barber bruh. shop. Like coming into the barber shop is like coming through the. Oh. Yeah, bruh. And the every last barber place gonna be looking at your mom. The they gonna be talking. Shop. You can't oh, yeah. fight everybody. Can't, can't fight. <laughs> not, not at six. <laughs> not at not six a.m. Oh, not at six. You can't. And so, and so you know, the, the biggest thing is like, like, yo, like, you know, it's, it's the place where it's kind of like the holy grail of, of communication. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, all in all, like we have to, you know, continue to uh, perfect that, continue to treat our barbershops with care, continue to support them financially um, and continue to build. That's the pillar. Gotta keep Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Given that, you know what I'm saying, we're supposed to say, what effectively are we looking at in regards to gaining from the barbershop as young men, right? When you're going in there, are you looking for anything in particular? You feel what I'm saying? Are you trying to learn something? Do we have that mentality when we walk into the barbershop? Or are we just seeing it as being a safe space? Are we seeing it as a space where we can kick it? Excuse my French, we just want to chop it up, shoot shit. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you know, it's kind of everything. It's kind of everything. Yeah, it it's is. Kind of everything. It's really, it's, it's your intent, right? I can go in there on a networking type of thing. And I can really just be in there, just networking and kind of build with people all day. Right. Or I can go in there and kind of find confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk to my barber like, you know what, it's something that I don't like. And, you know, it's something that I want to kind of improve on. He can be like, you know, do this. And, you know, yeah, 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 you know, so yeah. it's, uh, you know, a little bit of everything. But. So, so ch- cheers, man. Grab your glasses, fellas. Yeah. Cheers again. <laughs> For real. Facts. <laughs> cheers again, man. Good barbers, dope stories. Uh-huh. That was a good one. The greatest, the greatest. I'm a star shine bright like neon. neon. The new space jam like LeBron. LeBron. I'm out of this world like Elon. Elon.